This presentation is on how I prep single unit posterior crowns in my office. Uh, there's really just three burrs that I use for this process, a, a fat diamond burr, a regular shaped diamond burr, and then I finish it off with a carbide finishing burr. I will just reduce the occlusal grooves with using that fat diamond burr, then go on to remove the buccal and lingual cusps. After that, I'll move on and prep the buckle, not all the way down to the margin, just making sure that I'm getting enough bulk of the tooth removed, or a bulk of the enamel. And then I'll prep the lingual, and then I'll prep the interproximal. And when I prep the interproximal, I'll switch over and use the regular shaped diamond burr. But as I'm going across buckle, lingual, buckle, lingual, going down the interproximal, I'm going to try to leave a small sliver piece of enamel between the burr and the adjacent tooth. That'll help ensure that we don't scuff, or if we do scuff the adjacent tooth, it'll be uh, very minimal. After I've got that basic prep design finished, uh, it looks kind of squarish looking from the occlusal. So now it's time to round the line angles, again using just a regular shaped diamond burr. Round those line angles, <clears throat> I will also reduce the uh, buccal cusp, I'm sorry, reduce the occlusal line angles as well uh, to a two plane reduction and then uh, finish it up by just placing the final touches on the gingival margin. And the kind of crown I'm using these days, and this is filmed in 2012, is an Emax crown. The nice thing about that kind of crown is you're able to put the margin right at the gum line. You don't really have to tuck, tuck it underneath the gums like you had to with a PFM. Um, or in some cases, you can even leave it super gingival. And then right before I'm done with the crown prep, I'll take the regular shaped diamond burr and place a, um, a groove on the buckle. It just helps add to the retention form. It's going to also help with uh, having your temporary stay on better. And it also gives the lab just more re retention for your crown when, uh, when they're building it. Uh, so that little feature uh, really has helped us in our office quite a bit. But when we're done refining the prep, I'll then take the carbide finishing burr, go, to, down, go down inside the sulcus, go 360 degrees around. It causes a little bit of bleeding, but that can be controlled. But I create a larger sulcular crevice upon which I'll put some kind of retraction paste followed by a copper cap. Uh, the benefit of this is uh, we get a very nice, predictable, and quick retraction of the gum tissues so that we can move on to our impression technique. Now just for illustration purposes, what I've done to just show the occlusal reduction, it's not just a flat top. We actually try to follow the contour of how the cusps and the inclination of those cusps uh, were originally. For example, if I were to take out the anterior teeth uh, to this prep tooth and take a photograph going backwards, you'll see that the second molar right behind the prepped first molar, uh, there's uniform thickness as you go from the top of what's going to be the, the new crown surface and the actual prep. Having uniformity of thickness of material uh, gives the lab technician a chance to give you a better looking restoration, but also increases the longevity of that restoration so that you can decrease the chances of chipping in the future. Okay, so here's a clinical case. The patient comes in, Lower first molar, you can see it's a large composite filling with recurrent decay and part of that filling has broken away. Uh, we've removed the old uh, composite restoration, removed the decay, and that's what it looks like. In our office at this point, we will always stop and take a photograph. It's just good record keeping and will help uh, in your insurance narrative when trying to collect for the, on the patient's insurance benefits. Anyhow, moving along clinically, we'll then place a disposable matrix band around that tooth and just use composite as our buildup material. The tooth is then prepped just the way that I just explained and then the, um, the intracellular paste is put in there uh, along with a copper cap. The patient bites down on that cap for two minutes. Uh, afterwards we rinse it off and as you can see in that photograph we have a very nice prep. You can see that the, uh, the gum line uh, or the cellular part of the gum has been retracted away and we're going to get a very nice impression out of that. 